So I'm pretty excited to talk to you right now about my system for setting up goals. As you've known from before, I also have a system for creating habits. So I figured out a formula, kind of like a system, where pretty much with 100% guarantee, I know that I can create any habit and I'm very good at explaining to people how to do it. So I linked the, uh, the habit guide below. And I've also finally figured out how to almost 100% guarantee to accomplish any goal that you set for yourself. Now, I know this sounds kind of wacky because I'm not trying to say that you can accomplish anything at any time. What I'm trying to accomplish uh, to, to explain is that you can accomplish any goal that you want if you use this system because this system is, on one hand, it frees you to actually do the things you want to do and actually accomplish the goals you want. But on the other hand, it also constrains you so that you only pursue things that you know you have the capacity to do it. So I'm not saying easy things, but things that are challenging, but not too challenging that you will not be, uh, you won't even know if you're going to pull through and actually make them happen. So let's start. The first thing that you need to know if you want to start setting up goals is whether you respond to positive or negative reinforcements. Which type of motivation gets you going? Uh, for me, it's negative motivation. So I'm very much motivated by risk and fear and punishment, basically things that are negative, you know, bad consequences, while other people mostly women, by the way, are, will respond only to positive emotions, to positive motivations. So that means how much good is going to come out of that goal. So if you, um, you know, maybe the goal is to lose an X amount of weight, for me, what would be extremely motivating is setting up some sort of a risk or punishment where I need to lose that much weight and if I don't then I'm going to have to uh, I'll lose something so either I have it's it's money that I risk or anything else like the examples that I gave of me promising my girlfriend to do 30 videos in two weeks which I'm actually tomorrow is the last day for that challenge and I'm about to accomplish it. And the reason for that was because I had negative motivations in the form of the punishments that if I don't live up to that goal, I would have to break my phone, eat a ball of wasabi, and close my YouTube channel permanently. So that's pretty strong motivation for me. Now, my girlfriend, for example, she does not respond well to negative motivations. So if I did the same tour, she would just kind of break down and not want to do it. <laughs> she likes positive motivation. So with her, it's more important to constantly remind her how good it will be when she accomplished that, accomplishes that goal, like the amazing things that would happen. So again, if the, we use the example of losing weight, I would like to create some sort of a punishment if I don't do it. So now I'm fully committed you know, it's not just a goal in the air. It's it's not actually a goal until it's it has a true deadline and a real consequence. It's just a wish or it was something that you want. And for her, or, you know, mostly female, but again, some males do respond to negative, to positive motivations more than negative. For that kind of person, the main focus would be look how amazing it will be, it will be so much fun, you'll, you'll feel so much better, and, and just really going far on just finding out how many positive things will happen, like your blood pressure will be better, you'll feel better, the sex will be better, uh, people will look at you better, you're going to be healthier, you're going to be uh, more focused, so just as many positive reinforcements as possible. Now, once you've found your, the, your source of motivation, you want to set up the goal. So you choose 
whatever goal that you want to accomplish, whether it's something like making 30 videos in two weeks or something ginormous like closing a $500,000 deal. You can go as detailed as you want or as general as you want. So if, again, for example, you can say the goal is to lose 10 pounds, but you don't specify how. So you, by the same token, you could just not eat anything and starve yourself. Or you can set up a goal where it's, I need to lose 10 pounds by eating healthy and working out. So that gives you kind of a, a boundary to that. Again, so what you do is you choose a goal and then you set up a plan or the steps. The, that part is unnecessary. You don't have to plan it or set up steps. But what it will do is it will reduce your level of anxiety because the more, fo the more focused the goal, the more you know how you're going to accomplish it, uh, the less anxiety you'll have and the further away you could push the goal. So if I just tell you that you have to make $1,000, you know what, $10,000 by the end of the week or all your family will will die. <laughs> just a very extreme example. It's so super vague and there's actually a chance that it's, it's so difficult that you're just not, not going to know how to do it. So you just, you know, you're going to do crazy, crazy, crazy things to make it happen, but it's way too vague. But let's say I tell you, you have to make $10,000 by the end of the week, and I'm going to put you in a sales position where you're going to have to start selling expensive things, and you get a $1,000 commission for every sale. So now it's, again, it's still crazy, but at least it, it has some sort of a frame. So you know how to actually, how you're going to accomplish it, at least what the action uh, that it takes will be. Now, once you specify the goal, as well as the steps to achieving the goal, or the means, you want to look at the deadline. Because if you don't have a deadline to your goal, you can't really contrast it against your risk. So a, a deal has the, the financial risk, so that's sort of like a deadline. Or if you want to lose weight, again, if you don't put a deadline on it, it could take forever. There's no, like, you can't really say, if I don't lose this much weight, I'm going to, you know, get punished in some, some way or there's going to be a bad consequence, but I'm not going to say when. So, okay, so you know, there's no punishment because there's no expiration date on the goal. So you have to choose a, a, a deadline. When does it end? And now, at this point, what you want to do is you want to choose a certain risk or punishment, again, especially if you're a negative type of person. And this brings us to the biggest part of this system, which is what I call the stress meter. There's three levels you can get to on the stress meter. If the stress is too low, that means that the goal is not very engaging because there's not enough necessity. So maybe the goal itself is good enough, but you know it's a worthy goal, but there's no commitment to it. There's no, there's no skin in the game. So you have zero anxiety because you're just not gonna do it and nothing's gonna happen. So you become apathetic, you know, just forget about the goal. Maybe you start a bit and then you stop, or maybe you don't even start at all. But what's important is, just like I said in the video about the comfort zone is that your comfort zone is dynamic. It's not static. So it changes based on necessity. So the more necessity and commitment you have, the more crazy shit you're going to do that you never could have done without the necessity. Again, if you're a mother and or a father and you know your kid gets lost, if, if your kid's not there, then you're going to be very polite to people. You're not going to feel comfortable pushing people or moving them. But if your kid is lost and you're frantically looking for him, you're going to push people out of the way, you don't care. Because, again, necessity makes you comfortable, not necessarily comfortable, more courageous to do things you never thought you can do. And, again, you don't need to increase your comfort zone. You need to increase the necessity, which, again, check out the video about comfort zones for that information. So the, the, that bar of uh, stress meter, again, uh, if it's too low, meaning your intuition says uh, it's not very stressful, then 
no point in beginning because there's not enough pressure, you're just not going to do it. You need enough pressure for to, to actually launch properly and go all the way through. If the pressure is too high, where your intuition says, dude, do not commit to this, it's way too much for you, you're not going to make it, then you should listen to your intuition because there's a good chance that it's right. But if your intuition says, look, it's stressful, but it's not so stressful that I'm going to break down, and it's not so too not stressful where it's not engaging. So if your intuition is like, uh, I don't know, you know, it's kind of scary, but I think I can do it, then you hit, you, hit the, you hit the sweet spot of stress, which at this point, you, at this level of stress, you're going to perform at your best, and you're actually going to pull through on the goal. Because again, it's meaningful enough, it's big enough, but also the commitment is not, commitment is not too big where it's too scary for you. Now, the way you play with it is the larger the goal, the more the stress goes up. The lower the goal, the stress goes down. Because again, if I say, look, uh, you have to make $10 by tomorrow, or I'm going to shoot you in the head, then you know th it's very, very, very high risk. But because the goal is so small, there's no problem. But if I say, hey, you have to make a million dollars by tomorrow, um, or I'm going to shoot you in the head, now the goal is too big. Uh, because you can, e even though the risk is extremely, you know, it's your life, it's everything, e you can't accomplish it, it's too big, you're probably going to just break down and cry <laughs> or something. Um, but if it was like, okay, you have to make, let's say, $1,000 by tomorrow or I'm going to shoot you, you're actually going to be extremely effective. So you're going to take actions at levels you never thought you could. You're going to be more charismatic than you thought you could. You, you could. You're going to be more creative than you thought you could because your brain is just going to be, give you access to everything because now it's not, you know, it's not afraid of death. It's not afraid of humiliation or anything that's usually inside your comfort zone because, again, the risk is high enough. But if I told you, <laughs> so you're going to make it, you know, you're going to actually commit to it and make it happen because your life is depending on it. And it doesn't actually have to be your life. But, again, the higher the commitment, the more likely it is that you'll do whatever it takes to make it happen and find that you can do it, and w which is just amazing, just really amazing. But again, if, you, if I told you you have to make $1,000 by tomorrow or, you know, I'm going to slap you, you know, that's like you probably won't do it. Like probably even if you commit to actually getting slapped if you don't follow through, uh, you know, it's, is it really worth the discomfort for just getting, you know, just getting slapped? I mean, is it really worth going through the hassle and going so far out of my comfort zone just for a thousand, you know, for a thousand dollars just because I'm going to get slapped. Like, no. So you actually prefer getting slapped because at this point, the the goal is pretty high, but the risk is not high enough. So you consult your intuition because your intuition is smarter than you by an all near infinite amount. And because it's it has... Your intuition, your you know subconscious, your intuition has access to everything that you know. So everything that happened to you, all the data you know, then it has to have more kind of a fast type of processing that's a lot less articulate. And basically, the way the the intuition c communicates with you is, it takes all the data from your entire life, and it answers questions with yes, I don't know, or no. And that, that's all it can do with obviously varying degrees of yes and varying degrees of no. So, for example, you go into a dangerous neighborhood, your in, in, intuition automatically is like, no, no, get out, no, no, no. And that's all it can say. It can't say like, look, the odds of you getting stabbed or shot or hit here are very high and, you know, it's very dangerous. All it can say is like, I don't like, I don't like, get out, I don't like. And... The cool thing is that when you consult your intuition for setting goals using this uh, barometer of stress, the stress meter, your intuition is going to give you an almost like a genius response. And it's going to know exactly whether you're capable of doing what you are committing to or not. So uh, again, let's say you're like me and you want to start making videos. So you set up this goal of doing 30 videos in 30 days. So a video every day. And now you have to set up 
the you know the steps you don't have to set that up because it's not so complicated so you don't have to be like oh i need to go there and do this and this is how i accomplish the goal you can just say this is the goal cuz you'll probably find a way to record record videos either way and now you go to the actual uh, deadline which is 30 days and now the risk so this is a worthy goal for you and now you you actually ask well, how do i commit to it what's the skin in the game and the higher the you start playing with the skin in the game so you start setting up kind of like you start at the low level so you start like okay let's say if i don't do this then i'm going to have to pay my friend 100 dollars and then your intuition is like eh i don't know like okay yeah that's pretty fucked up but yeah i mean i i can i can do that like it's not that bad to do that okay so you say okay it's not enough stress so you raise the stress a bit and say, okay, if I don't do it, I have to pay my friend $1,000. And now your intuition is like, whoa, this is cool. Because it's not too high, like $10,000 or $100,000 where it's like your life's saving and, you know, very scary. It's just the right amount where you're very, very, very challenged and you immediately your physiology braces to action. But again, it's not too low either where you're apathetic which is perfect. And if you reach that sweet spot, again, kind of like a mixing of uh, like chemistry, you add the goal, you, you know, play with the goal a bit, you play with the steps, you play with the deadline, you know, a bit sooner, a bit later, you play with the risk, and your goal is to reach that sweet spot of the stress meter. And once you hit the sweet spot where your, where your intuition is like, let's do it, like it's scary, but I think I can do it, that's when you commit, you know, you stamp it out on paper. Like if it's a, you know, a financial deal, then usually you don't have to because the money kind of commits you to it. But if it's not something that's purely financial, uh, like an investment, then really just um, talk to the most trust, trustful person, the person you trust, you trust the most in the whole world that wants the best for you. And just commit to them, like because you can't trust yourself. So commit to them. Make sure they hold you accountable. Um, even give you reminders of what's going to happen if you don't do it. And if you set it up properly, again, if you hit the sweet spot on the stress meter, like you're going to see incredible performance. And that's really how I started. Like just as a side note, like that is how I started. I I literally just chose a goal, which was. I'm going to start making at least $300 a day from online uh, business and coaching. And I'm going to move to a hotel that costs $700 a night. And unless I start closing those deals, I'm going to be in big trouble. <laughs> and that's how I committed. And it was the scariest thing I ever did up until that point. And I would wake up every morning there with panic attacks. But... I did stuff I never believed I could do. Like I started closing sales like mad and I took like this charismatic, decisive action. Like the most, the best videos I made, I made them under periods of intense stress to perform, to get noticed, to reach certain financial goals. It's just the way it works. I mean, just you, there's so much power in, in you and unless you have that necessity, you're not going to see that. And the cool thing is that once you accomplish the first goal you set, you're going to get addicted because you're going to see that you have so much potential, so much more than you ever thought you have, that you're going to start wanting to explore and fresh off of your first victory and in accomplishing your first goal, which, again, similar to me, just accomplishing right now the 30-day challenge of uh, the, the you know 14-day challenge of making 30 videos, the first thing that goes to my head is like, whoa, like, what do I do? when I finish the challenge tomorrow or in two days, like what's, what's the next step? And obviously that's the cool part about being human is that the next step is bigger. It's bigger than the first. So it's, it's, it's something more challenging. It's, it's more, it will make you stretch even more and you keep growing those goals. You're going to reach very, very far. Just, but just keep working based on that formula on based on that intuition and, and reaching that sweet spot of stress. Because again, if you do the mistakes I did like a, a year and a half ago where 
I thought I was invincible because every time I committed to something, and it, I did some crazy, crazy shit. So you can read about it in my autobiography called Evolution of a Maniac, which I also linked below. It, I did crazy, crazy stuff. And I thought I was invincible because every time I committed, I, and I mean, when I say committed, I mean, I meant to take, took a big risk to achieve something that was way beyond my current ability. I thought that I'm invincible and that it's just the formula for success and that every time I'll do it, I just it's just going to work. So one day, it just, again, this is very, very personal, but I'm sharing it here. I, I literally just said, okay, if I, I I'm going to, I think it was like make a million dollars by, by the, in two and a half or three months and, and like buy a rent of a villa and, in like one of the most expensive places in Israel. So I did the first one. I rented the villa for like $15,000. The second one, I think I made like a hundred, more like $85,000 in a relatively short time. But again, I grew way, way too fast, um, which is not good. <laughs> not good uh, if you don't have the proper foundations and uh, just uh, the stress and, and uh, you know the risk. The risk I said was if I if I don't accomplish that goal by then, I'm, I'm just gonna kill myself. <laughs> like uh, that was like the ultimate uh, thing. So you, you can imagine like how what level of craziness and like like deep belief, like bad belief in yourself, like pathological level of belief I had in myself uh, to commit to that. And again, it took a long time to fix. My, myself after that but uh, but the, the the moral here of this personal story is like just because things finally are going to start working out for you and you actually are going to accomplish the goals that you wanted to accomplish all your life uh, you don't need to as long as you you, you you must not pass that point of the stress meter where the sweet spot is just there you must never go beyond the sweet spot because if you start going beyond the sweet spot, you're risking, first of all, your health and secondly, your mental sanity. And again, there's a chance that you'll just break down and just what happens, and I'll tell you what happens when you go too far beyond the stress zone is that the, the sweet spot of the stress zone is that you, your body just, just, just gives up. Like, like if it's just too overwhelming, you're, body literally just says fuck it like I give up and it takes away all your resources so you lose all your energy and all your mental capacity because just too much stress for your body so it, it literally gives up and you don't want to get there uh, but on the other hand you don't want to be like everybody else who is like the 99.9% .9 that don't you know they set up a goal but there's no not any risk no commitment at all so they just won't do it. So they learn that they're, they believe that they're not, you know, they can't trust themselves because it's whatever they set up, they don't actually do. So they just stop setting goals. So what I would recommend is that what you do is you set up the right risk and you're going to see some amazing magic. So that's pretty much it for the goal system. Uh, let me know if you have any question or comment. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't and check out the links in the description. Also, feel free to go on a free coaching call with me through Skype and uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you later.